Uh, I will try uh, to use my time um, just to continue this discussion. I think it's, uh, it's uh, unavoidable that we have the many overlaps today uh, and uh, it would be very difficult to, to not to, to overlap with the great, uh, great uh, insightful uh, talk uh, of, uh, by Mark. Um, Bramble, um, I'm also not, uh, I would say, very, very optimistic with regard to the legal uh, developments uh, of international criminal law and environmental crimes. Uh, I'm not pessimistic at the same time. Uh, what I will try to do is to reflect on the current state of affairs, uh, maybe more focusing on the uh, initiative to criminalize uh, internationally the crime of ecocide. I will also um, discuss um, the perspectives and uh, of the uh, environmental crimes uh, within the framework of international criminal law. Uh, and I would like to start uh, with what we just discussed. So the, I agree fully with uh, Mark Jumble that law is not a magic tool to solve all the problems and maybe it's not uh, the, the best tool to address uh, environmental, uh, environmental uh, problems and environmental crimes generally, so um, environmental damage. It is true, but uh, the law is not only international criminal law, and the international criminal law is not only um, uh, the ICC uh, statutory framework. Uh, and uh, international law actually offers other legal regimes, not just uh, the individual criminal responsibility. So I would like to start with this. Uh, so when, uh, when we uh, address uh, expansion of international criminal law. We have to look what we have already, what, we, what, what is the basis for such uh, new or extended criminalization. So in, um, in, many, uh, in many other cases like economic crimes, like organized crime, like corruption. So I, I would like to remind you that for all these uh, types of criminal activities, we have already certain proposals to include uh, serious economic crimes in China. You, you are. Uh, it's your uh, lifetime project. Uh, there are other proposals, including corruption, large-scale corruption, to be included in the core crimes uh, catalog. For all these uh, crimes, so-called new crimes, uh, we have um, at least certain basis of state obligations uh, under international law. We have uh, so-called suppressing suppression conventions. So conventions, uh, international treaties that uh, first uh, impose obligation on states to criminalize certain behavior. And uh, also jurisdictional regime. Uh, so in such, in many cases, they allow states to prosecute these crimes under um, um, what, we call, what we can call universal jurisdiction. Uh, also uh, obligations uh, related to mutual legal assistance that was that we also discussed quite recently with Professor Verbale. And um, these uh, conventions also, uh, most of them at least, uh, create a mechanism, mechanisms of monitoring uh, and implementation. Uh, if you look at the international environmental law, uh, its current state uh, is very fragmented. Uh, we have just, uh, just uh, a handle of um, uh, conventions that uh, impose on state obligation to criminalize certain behavior. And this is not always clear uh, what, uh, what exactly the states uh, are uh, bound to criminalize. And what is especially uh, notable that uh, we don't have uh, the, any monitoring or implementation mechanisms under these conventions. So for, for these uh, for this new uh, environmental crimes and international criminal law, we don't have just international legal uh, basis. We don't have what constitute uh, under international law uh, consistent and widespread state practice. So the basis for um, uh, international core crimes, for the idea uh, that uh, the crimes uh, under international law are directly punishable, 
uh, and they, 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 there is an uh, individual criminal responsibility directly under international law, was the idea that all these crimes are um, already uh, part of customary international law. For customary international law, we need not just conventions, we need uh, state practice and opinion juris. So the, the widespread belief, the, 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 the belief that these uh, this, uh, uh, crimes are really uh, the, not just the obligation of states, but they are part of international law, they are international legal norms. Um, so this is um, what, we, what we have to depart from, that, that we don't have uh, right now uh, the, the corpus of international law that allows us to, uh, to, to, to move in this direction uh, without uh, first to address these gaps uh, that, exist, uh, that exist in international law. Um, if you look at the history of uh, environmental um, international criminal law, if we can call it uh, that way, uh, the idea, the, the, these ideas have been discussed uh, within the International Law Commission several times. It was a time when the states, the states' representatives and the states that actually adopted uh, these recommendations by the uh, International Law Commission. It was the uh, one of the project was the so-called draft code of crimes against uh, peace and security of mankind. Uh, and uh, there was also in the same time uh, draft articles for state responsibility have been also discussed. And uh, at that time, uh, the prospects of international criminal court, permanent ICC, uh, have been very far from reality. So. Uh, this discussion was, uh, I think, much more, uh, much more, more theoretical, hypothetical, but at the same time, much more productive in terms of the ideas. Yeah. So, if we, uh, if you look at the uh, one of the quotes, draft quotes of 1991, it was the only quote that uh, draft quote that included environmental uh, environmental crimes, the autonomous crime of environmental damage. Uh, it included not only this crime; it was very very large number of uh, various, uh, various uh, offenses. Uh, and at that time, um, this idea was always around. And uh, what is also notable that um, uh, during the uh, drafting of the so-called draft articles of the state responsibility, of the responsibility of states for international wrongful act, at that time, uh, these uh, articles contained a provision of international crimes of states. So it's special uh, kind of uh, violations of international law, the international wrongful acts that called international crimes. And most of them corresponded to, um, to the individual crimes of individuals, also recognized by international law. One of these examples of international crimes of states or uh, the, the international wrongful acts uh, called criminal uh, was also the um, environmental damage, the damage to natural environment. Um, so this idea was always around, but uh, as soon as some practical steps for, uh, followed as establishment of the ICC, this idea was dropped very quickly. Uh, already in 1996, when uh, the, uh, the, 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 the last, uh, by uh, so far, uh, the draft code was adopted by the, uh, the uh, International Law Commission, uh, the environmental crime, uh, it, it was not called ecocide in this draft, but I think the idea was the same. It was the massive uh, and uh, long-standing uh, damage to the natural environment. Uh, so this idea was uh, dropped and um, uh, in the Rome Statute, uh, as you already discussed a lot, this provision on the war crimes. Uh, to this discussion, I can only add that uh, this uh, war crime uh, is, of course, uh, designed in the way that it's not, uh, I would say, it's not, uh, there is no practical, uh, practical prospects of its uh, implementation and practice. We have a uh, very high threshold, especially in mental element. It's almost impossible to, to prove. 
uh, in real uh, in reality of any armed conflict. And uh, what is especially uh, interesting that uh, this uh, war crime uh, is only punishable um, in the international armed conflict. So. Uh, because it, uh, this provision directly flows from the first additional protocol to Geneva Conventions. And uh, since the adoption of the Rome Statute, there, was, have been, there has been no, uh, no uh, proposal to, uh, to amend this Article 8 in this regard. So, so this, uh, this is still uh, just uh, an option for, uh, for international armed conflicts. Um, moreover, uh, it, um, we, we, we know why it happened, because uh, it's, the same, it's the same provision that criminalizes uh, collateral damage, so incidental damage, so it's not uh, to civilians, so it's not uh, in the interest of states to, to criminalize uh, behavior that would be, uh, I think, very, very risky in, uh, in uh, internal, internal uh, struggles, so it limits their uh, use of force in, uh, in, um, in non-international armed conflicts. So um, what we have now, I think, is that international environmental crimes are not, uh, not part of the core crimes catalog. Uh, we can theoretically, we can, we can of course uh, theorize that under certain circumstances, crimes against humanity and uh, other inhumane acts or uh, the crime of extermination can be committed through ecocide. Uh, we could also say that genocide in form of uh, uh, creating conditions uh, calculated to, uh, to, destroy, to destroy a group could be also uh, be committed uh, through uh, environmental damage. And of course, we have uh, war crimes provisions that uh, at least uh, by certain certain authors called uh, ecocide in the armed conflict, but indeed uh, all these provisions don't allow us to say that uh, their current uh, core crimes uh, law, um, now crimes on core international crimes, um, provide for uh, environmental uh, environmental crimes. So I'm uh, a little bit would like to now to 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 to, to focus on uh, the crime of ecocide. So what is ecocide? Ecocide uh, has never been, uh, I think, uh, a legal, a strict legal uh, term of art. It was never uh, defined um, authoritatively as as the the by any legal instrument. So ecocide uh, is just uh, used as the, the term that uh, is used first in, in the, I think in the very uh, broad sense as the, um, as the uh, uh, long-term lasting um, uh, environmental destruction. So one of the definition provided by uh, uh, environmental and um, uh, environmental activist, uh, uh, an expert, uh, Holly Higgins, uh, is read as follows: the extensive destruction, damage, or loss of ecosystems of a given territory, uh, whether human agency or by other causes. Um, that's um, to the extent that peaceful enjoyment by the inhabitants of that territory has been severely diminished. Uh, this is uh, the definition that, of course, falls short of any, uh, I would say, sign of legal certainty. It, it, uh, it encompasses not only, uh, I think, individual criminal behavior, but also natural, uh, natural disasters. Uh, and uh, in, uh, with such a broad definition, uh, we, can, we cannot uh, discuss uh, ecocide as, as a real uh, the, of, uh, the definition of the offense. Um, what, uh, coming to recent initiatives, so if, we, if, you, uh, if you follow the recent, uh, recent news, uh, it no, was not only the, the, uh, the event in, in Rome, what Mark uh, just mentioned, uh, actually, um, uh, the Pope, uh, His Holiness uh, Pope Francis, just uh, just echoed uh, these, this this uh, uh, 
uh, previous initiatives by environmental activists like uh, the addition to the fifth crimes against peace it was his formula uh, but uh, to to criminalize uh, the crime of ecocide um, uh, quite recently in uh, december 2019 uh, in the assembly of state parties to the icc uh, two states uh, two islands small island states, uh, the Re Republic of Maldives and uh, Republic of Vanuatu, uh, actually um, made a statement uh, supported by two other uh, also small states. Uh, it was uh, Kiribati and, if I'm not mistaken, so some, another uh, small states, I think it was Tuvalu, Tuvalu, yes, uh, uh, that uh, ecocide should be, uh, should be added to the subject matter jurisdiction of the ICC. Um, okay, uh, this, uh, this is of course the statement of the state parties. It's what is interesting in this regard. First, that uh, all the states are, I think, uh, contemporary or potential victims of the climate change. So they are not uh, addressing um, specific incidents, uh, but uh, the more broad uh, threats caused by the, uh, by the climate change in specific uh, circumstances of this, uh, this states. Some of them, and especially Kiribati, which is the last addition to the state parties of the Rome Statute, it was the state that uh, most recently ratified the statute and they openly said that that it is their um, contribution to the to the ICC so they don't know um, have not just come to the court but they have brought their agenda so they 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 have the agenda and their agenda is uh, um, what is really met what, what really matters is environmental damage so uh, they didn't uh, submit any 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 draft any any specific definition of uh, ecocide that they want to uh, to discuss and actually if you look at the perspectives of this uh, i think uh, uh, it's a, it's a zero probability that uh, the ecocide uh, in the current uh, in the current form would be um, in the foreseeable future to be really considered. So the, the idea was that state parties should consider that. Um, it's not only because we don't have, I, I would say the firm ground in international law that was already, I already mentioned that, but uh, there are many problems with this proposal. And um, some of them have been already, uh, have been already uh, discussed by Bar Barbara and, uh, and uh, Mark. Uh, I can only say that all the elements, starting from Arctus Reus, so what is the uh, what is the uh, the um, threshold of the environmental harm uh, in environmental crimes everywhere on the state level and international level, we have the same problem: how to evaluate, how to measure uh, the uh, crime, uh, the harm to the environment. Uh, it's very often uh, caused by the collective enterprises by collective efforts and by corporations of course we in international law we don't have the framework of corporate criminal liability uh, and uh, the, the attribution the to the individuals would uh, create uh, i think uh, difficulties that we cannot overcome on the international level and uh, it uh, would not be, uh, of course, in the interest of states to, uh, to overcome that. Um, two questions that I think are important. Uh, when we draft any environmental provision, first is the, of course, the, the issue of state involvement. So all the crimes so far under international law in uh, the ICC, so-called ICC crimes, have the element direct or indirect of state involvement. Of course, even in the international, non-international armed conflicts, we have uh, in most cases, uh, some link to the state policy, uh, and at, or at least organizational policy as in crimes against humanity and the war crimes. Because uh, when, uh, when the non-international armed conflict is in uh, question, uh, we have a, already organization which is capable to commit uh, certain acts. Uh, 
uh, on the so-called peacetime ecocide or inter environmental, uh, serious environmental crimes, uh, it's uh, highly questionable how we uh, justify uh, the criminalization without involvement of state first. And uh, I think the second um, the big question uh, is how we, uh, how we address uh, the issue of, uh, uh, of, of course, individual, individual responsibility, how we, uh, how we um, attribute uh, behavior of corporations to the, uh, to the, to the individuals. Uh, and um, uh, mens rea uh, poses uh, a more serious problem. Um, uh, Mark already mentioned, uh, I think, genocide with this specific intent. Uh, I think it's not, it's not a case of ecocide, so it's just uh, the, same, uh, the same formula, the same way of creating, uh, I think, the beautiful world that would be probably play the same role, because genocide, you know, became a G word that uh, has, uh, I think, uh, the life of its own, but uh, on the, uh, when we talk about ecocide, I think the, the only reasonable, uh, reasonable solution is, uh, is uh, to, to make it intentional crime because, uh, but uh, as we know, in most of the prosecution, successful prosecution and in the state level, um, of the inter environmental crimes, of course, they are uh, a crime of negligence. They are not. Uh, they are not specifically. Uh, specifically, uh, they don't include uh, intent. Uh, not to say specific intent. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, I, I'm not talking only about the ICC. I'm talking about international criminal law in general. Uh, I think the, the complementarity concept is very relevant here. So if we don't have, um, don't have the uh, firm legal, uh, international legal ground, we don't have the uh, uniform uh, criminalization on the state level, uh, it would be highly unlikely that states would uh, agree on uh, international legal regime that would based on complementarity, uh, whether on indirect ways we have in the ICC or in other ways that actually uh, the indirect system it also it is also to some extent based on complementarity mechanism. So it. Uh, the international mechanism only work when uh, the state, uh, the, the, when the national uh, criminal uh, law and criminal justice is not able or willing to, to prosecute environmental crimes. Um, so, um, some of you uh, don't remember who uh, actually mentioned uh, that, well, um, since uh, we are not yet ready to, to do this on the, 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 the level of the ICC, why not to do this on the national level and to, to, uh, to push this, this uh, criminalization. So criminalization uh, to make, uh, of course, this is important to, to label certain behavior, to, to at least to call certain uh, wrongs. I have no doubt that we have wrongs, uh, environmental wrongs uh, to be criminal, and uh, it's much better to call it, to label it international criminals, international crime. Uh, but um, one example that I already have, uh, that uh, my country has criminalized ecocide. So it's, it's one of the few countries actually in the world that has uh, the crime of ecocide under this title in, in the criminal code. Uh, and I think this story is interesting because uh, it illustrates uh, the same problem that we have on the international level. So when the code was drafted, Russian code, uh, Russian criminal code or penal code, whatever we call it, was drafted uh, in 1996. It was the same time when International Law Commission discussed uh, the, the extended version of the uh, international criminal uh, law, the law of international crimes, and I think it was one of the the triggers to include this. I think uh, um, this provision. It was uh, in in the in the 90s. It was very I think popular idea to uh, to push this environmental uh, projects because it was 
very shortly after Rio conference. And uh, Russian criminal court has this uh, ecocide, crime of ecocide in the international chapter, so-called international chapter, chapter of international crimes, the crimes against peace and security of mankind. And uh, the, uh, the current uh, code uh, punishes, uh, at least it uh, provides for punishment uh, for the mass destruction of flora and fauna, contamination of the atmosphere, uh, water resources, or other acts capable to cause an environmental catast catastrophe. Uh, it's uh, the crime that, uh, uh, like all other international crimes uh, in our national framework, uh, don't uh, have the statutes of limitation. They are part of a universal jurisdiction, uh, jurisdiction regime. Um, so first, it's very broad definition. It um, provides for uh, not only, uh, it, it criminalizes not only um, the actual harm to the environment, but the acts capable to, res uh, to, 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 to cause or generate uh, the environmental calamity. Um, so this is, uh, this is the, 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 the provision, national provision. Uh, Russia is the country where since uh, the, the 1996, uh, there have been many, uh, many uh, serious environmental uh, catastrophes. Just uh, last month, a month ago, uh, there was a widespread uh, outcry of the of the events in Kamchatka, in the far east of the country, the peninsula where the, uh, the there was a huge, uh, huge, uh, huge pollution uh, on the in the seabed. And uh, according to reports, of course, reports of NGOs and Greenpeace and other uh, organizations uh, in this area. Uh, up to 95% of of the uh, of the marine um, uh, life has been uh, uh, killed. Um, so uh, nothing, no talk about the criminal uh, criminal uh, liability and even criminal case. And uh, this this article was forgotten. Why? Because. Um, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't have the, uh, the proper, I think, proper place in the legal discussion. It remains the symbol, but when this symbol is not, uh, is not uh, operating in the appropriate, uh, I think, legal infrastructure with the, uh, with the other norms that support uh, this norm, and most importantly, without a policy, uh, in this uh, regard. This ecocide provision would be dead also in international law. In international law, we also have many forgotten uh, and non-workable norms. Uh, unfortunately, even the, 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 the holy call of international law, the crime of aggression remains also uh, the, uh, the, this, the project that is not yet, um, I would say, very fruitful. Um, so, um, to sum up, I'm not uh, against uh, the discussion on the ecocide. I'm not uh, pessimistic in terms of the development that we are discussing and that we are, uh, we are uh, talking today. I think that environmental uh, threats are really existential and uh, criminal law cannot be just uh, uh, stay aside. Uh, what uh, what we have to do is not to uh, to join uh, activists of all this kind to advertise uh, beautiful words and beautiful uh, projects, but to try to first to improve the existing framework. Uh, so, for example, in the, in the framework of the international uh, criminal law, we have to uh, to to discuss better not inclusion of the new crimes. Uh, especially those crimes that have no prospects to be included in this catalog, but improvement in the existing uh, legal framework. For example, war crimes. We have a uh, very unsatisfactory, I think, situation when uh, the environmental damage in the, uh, the no non-international armed conflict, the most of the conflicts now, the absolute majority, the vast majority of conflicts are non-international. and. Um, 
every day the environmental damage from these conflicts uh, is, is it is not just the theory it is not just the these the stories it's 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 a fact um this is one idea uh, of course the the in the criminal law sphere we have to work on uh, the better conventional regime and uh, i think it should be the first step not theorizing on the international uh, i would say crimes uh, and the new international crimes uh, but to create uh, more effective uh, framework of uh, uh, obligations of states uh, not only to criminalize but also monitor monitoring and implementing mechanisms so i'm uh, um, i have to to stop now uh, just to to remind you that uh, this is quite a symbolic discussion uh, we yesterday i think it was the, the critical date for the withdrawal of the united states from the paris agreement so we we our discussion goes in one way but unfortunately the uh, so our planet uh, may be moving to other direction but anyway i remain optimistic i think uh, that we uh, as legal uh, professionals legal scholars uh, we should not be we shouldn't shy away from any kind of discussion uh, the fact that it's not yet uh, becoming i don't know the legal uh, legal norm on that uh, we are not yet able to to push certain things into international law and international practice uh, doesn't mean that we have we, we should refrain from discussion uh, discussions of all kinds and uh, i fully agree with mark that we have to be more open to our colleagues from other disciplines i think it's what we have to do uh, all the time uh, also within our discussions um, uh, not to not not to remain in our bubble even if it's a beautiful bubble it's still um, i think uh, the better to 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 look uh, to look out uh, thank you very much uh, and i'm sorry for for all the the disruptions i, I think it's really non perfect uh, solution this zoom but i try to 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 say something <laughs> thank you and i'm looking forward to any discussion Yes, thank you very much, uh, Clap. Um, well, that was quite well. The well in depth, or the other perspective, maybe in addition to Marx. Um, well, I see some skepticism everywhere here. Um, I wouldn't be too skeptical because um, if you think how long did it take until we had the ICC um, with all the failures and deficiencies that are now in the system. But um, well, when there are no ideas and no nothing con is conceptualized, then uh, nothing can happen. Uh, and so far, I think it's very important that we come together here, even under not ideal circumstances, and try to develop a bit more. And of course, well, we can take small steps, which might be easier for improving the ruling system. But we can also think um, what would be about in 30 years. How shall it look like when the climate change has been much more, when there have been um, maybe much more conflicts um, based on environmental issues or, and so on. And so far, um, it's quite valuable what we do here. And um, I just talked to Sunshana yesterday. Well, we always have students here in the course. Um, they do not stay students forever. Um, they become sometimes and very often important players in the system and if they take up ideas we have today and so far I would say that's very valuable um, for the future development of law and of course we are talking about international law and everything is complex and complicated and politically influenced much more maybe than on a national level but nonetheless um, things change um, maybe they change today in the U.S., maybe not, um, but presidents come and go. Um, the law stays, and if we develop the law, um, then we might not succeed next year, but some years after. Um, I just didn't want to um, end the discussion here, um, so the floor is open for comments, for um, questions, for additional statements. Everybody.
Uh, sorry, I have a question for Gleb. Yes, please. Uh, is the reason that uh, Russian Federation has a crime of ecocide in its legislation many, many uh, ecological problems that uh, took place during the Soviet era, like Chernobyl, Lara Lake, etc. Yeah, I think it was, of course, uh, there have been many, many, many uh, problems and these problems pertain, uh, but I think it was just uh, kind of, kind of decision. Uh, one of the decisions of the drafters. Actually, all, many other post-Soviet republics, uh, republics of the Soviet Union, former republics have the same provision. It was a so-called model code. Uh, at that time, at least, uh, now it's almost forgotten, but at that time there was a model code, so-called model code that influenced also other other post-Soviet republics. So as far as I know, the almost all of them have uh, the similar provision. Um, but I'm not sure that was attached to any specific uh, environmental problems. But at that time, it was one of the important, I think, uh, pillars of the policy to, 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 and I think at that time, uh, most of the politicians, at least, uh, regarded this topic, I would say, rather innocent. Or, so they, they, they don't believe it was too political. It, but was because it was many time. Uh, it was many years ago. Now, of course, it's totally different. So it's. I think it's number one issue. It's top uh, political uh, topic, and uh, I think the government uh, is quite worried about uh, this. But at that time, um, they did. I th don't think that uh, the political forces actually did care about this. So. Uh, time changes and actually um, the, the, the agenda shifted. Now it's it's quite different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. I see. Then I see. Uh -huh. You see some question. Yeah, three questions by now. First is four, four by now. Okay. Um, so I start with Mare. Is there an initiative for implementing ecocide in international law legislations? maybe specifically in the European Convention on Human Rights. What do you think how will the biggest corporations in the world and economically strongest countries react on implementing ecocide? Will they ratify it? And is there some other mechanism for them to adhere? So, very specific. Um, uh, I think it's very unlikely that uh, we will uh, witness, uh, I don't know, the, the, the way for ratifications. Even if such uh, such uh, such amendment uh, would be, so and we have to discuss what kind of amendment it would be. So if we discuss uh, the um, the crime of ecocide as a part of uh, international criminal court stated, it's one thing. Uh, but as far as I know, there was in the, in other initiatives is it's on on the level of European Union, the so-called European Citizens Initiative. And uh, this was not uh, so far considered seriously by, by, by the European Parliament, even by the European Parliament. So it's, I don't know, uh, I don't think that states uh, will be very enthusiastic about this, to be, to be, to be honest. I think um, yeah, first, I, uh, we have to work on the specific uh, specific instruments that at least deal with international cr with the environmental crimes on the national level. So I think it, what what is more realistic than to push uh, push uh, the the grand project on uh, on ecocide or uh, I would say global environmental uh, international crimes. So first, to, 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 to think about unification, certain, certain process of, uh, of creating the, the, the harmonization of the legal framework in environmental criminal law. So I think it's much more realistic, also on the European level, not only European Union, but perhaps also on the Council of Europe framework. So probably it would be the best, uh, the best, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the better target. Um, uh, in this uh, at that at that moment. 
Okay, so then Ina is asking, is a law of ecocide compatible with economic growth and what could be the consequences of international criminalization of ecocide on economic level, on the economic level then? So, difficult question. That, that's, difficult, that's a difficult question. I, I don't think uh, we, we can answer, we, we, I don't think we can answer that question. Because uh, I'm not, of course, economist. That's a, it's a, it's not a question for lawyers. I think any any, any kind, and it's. A, uh, I would answer anyway. I think uh, it would. Uh, the answer would be different uh, if it if it talk about the the short term perspective. So probably if we, if we are talking about short term perspective, it would be negative influence. <laughs> Because uh, and this is what the, what the current American, for example, politics is all about, how they discuss the the, the climate uh, change and everything. Uh, and uh, on the long perspective, uh, I think uh, we have to deal with these environmental problems. So I think uh, it's number one issue for the world, for the whole world, for all countries. So. Uh, without uh, without um, solving these problems, we we don't have actually the, the great perspective in economy as well. But uh, I don't think that the, the criminalization as such mm. would, is a decisive factor. I think it's just one piece of the puzzle, but without other pieces, these symbolic steps, um, whatever important they are, they don't play any 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 positive or even negative role it's 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 not just one piece in the system well closely connected to that is uh, the next question from kim which is the most effective way to stop suicide and what are the control mechanisms that it's a bit maybe what would see you as the first step I think it's it's uh, it's uh, uh, the the states uh, still play a crucial role. It's uh, it's uh, we cannot uh, would say uh, discuss just individuals and corporations. So this is a question about states, how to control states, how to defer states, and the problem on the international level that we don't have uh, the effective system of state responsibility. So we don't have. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the necessary component of this system. We don't have the compulsory jurisdiction of the international tribunals. So actually, uh, in most cases, uh, we have the principle in international law, which is very well developed. It worked on uh, so-called transborder environmental harm. Uh, and uh, there is international, the, the state responsibility, but how to trigger this responsibility, how to implement this responsibility. As we see in many cases, uh, even some of them, by the way, related to environment. For example, the China, the, the, the South China Sea is actually, it's not only about the borders, it's about also about environment. And we see that when the states have um, freedom uh, to accept or not to accept the international uh, scrutiny and international dispute resolution, I don't think it would be uh, any international effective system. So this is, this is all about state, uh, state sovereignty and international law. So I think the state responsibility is also uh, the decisive, decisive factor. So I would first uh, rely on the development on the international uh, international law uh, we have time when it happened so it's now it's maybe it seems uh, it seems impossible uh, now the climate uh, the horrible it's, it's horrible in international relations but it can change one day and we could continue this I would say trend. It could be another great convention, like we, for example, we have for the, the law of the sea. Probably one day we will come to the point when some certain certain environmental convention would be possible. And this convention would include, of course, uh, ob obligations towards criminalizations uh, and uh, towards uh, the effective criminal prosecution of uh, environmental crimes. Yeah, well, and then there's one question from Anya, well, going to the corporate sphere, um, asking in Russia in 2020, do you have the same split in the CSR, the 
corporate social responsibility doctrine debate, as we do say in the US. The competition between narrow and broad outlooks, where it's only the matter is in favor of using law as a regulatory instrument beyond the effort of securing the traditional freedoms, including market freedoms. I think it's. I think it's a. It's a very. Uh, may, maybe there is some discussion, but it's a very embryo. I think uh, stage, and uh, I think it's nothing in comparison with what we have in the United States. I think there is, of course, uh, discussion. Of course, in the, in the within the the corporate uh, also, but mostly these discussions. Uh, the first problem that it involves mostly corporate lawyers. So it's not. Uh, so it's not. Uh, so it's not about. Uh, it's not about uh, the broad discussion. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't think uh, that we have uh, that we have now uh, something comparable uh, to this uh, discussion. But of course, lawyers uh, who are uh, specializing in corporate law and corporations and uh, corporate liability are aware of these uh, discussions, but it unfortunately doesn't, is not translated to domestic, uh, domestic legal um, discourse. Well, and then last but not least, I would give the floor to Sun Shana um, for one question. <laughs> or maybe a comment because we are already a bit late. Uh, uh, Gleb, first of all, I love your surroundings, unlike Mark's with that horrible picture. <laughs> uh, 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 so Gleb, uh, I love it. I think it's a good surrounding for the topic that uh, you are sharing with us today. Uh, I, 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 have, I have plans, you know. I saw it. I my, saw my new plans, yeah, so you can see. Yeah. <laughs> and the green, and the green, uh, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really beautiful. Uh, thank you for your thoughts. Uh, actually, many questions that were posed uh, already is something that um, um, I wanted to comment a bit, but also, as you put in your short description of the presentation, and I had um, the privilege to share the experience with you when we went to the Pope, uh, to the Pope in, when was it, November, December? It was uh, in November. It was November. in November. So one year ago, actually, when there was IDP meeting, we were privileged enough, I would say, to be able to go to the Pope and to listen exactly about uh, the topics that we are discussing in this seminar, how important it is to uh, tackle. Most of the participants, unfortunately, <laughs> read the, the, the full speech only after because the, the whole speech was in Italian without uh, translation. So okay. only those who, who understand beautiful Italian language could, uh, could follow. But... Yeah, but there is now translation of it uh, available in English and in other languages. So um, I, it, it seems that after one year, we are discussing the same issue. And thank you for sharing your thoughts, for giving us kind of uh, maybe middle approach um, um, uh, with uh, what we heard today from um, uh, Judge Turkovic and from Mark. Uh, and uh, we only, what I can end here is that I really enjoyed today's uh, lectures. I enjoyed that we still have questions that we need to answer. I hope that you all three will address it in your contributions. And uh, thank you again for our participants who are really very careful in listening to you. We are doing that for them primarily.